Here we're gonna look at a nice problem involving the floor function. So you guys know I like the floor function. I've got a whole playlist of problems involving the floor function. This one happens to come from the International Math Olympiad shortlist and the year was 1998. So our goal is to find all real numbers A and B satisfying this equation. A times the floor of B times N is equal to B times the floor of A times N, and this needs to be true for all natural numbers N. So in other words, we need A times the floor of B to be equal to B times the floor of A. We also need A times the floor of 2B to be equal to B times the floor of 2A, and then so on and so forth. Okay, so before we look at a solution, I've cooked up, cooked up some hints for you guys to try. So maybe this is a hint that I use for a lot of these problems, but it turns out to be a really good thing to keep in mind, and that is the obvious solutions are probably the only solutions. So notice that if A or B are equal to zero, then you're good to go. Actually, if you're equal to any integer, then you're good to go. So those are some of the obvious solutions. And then maybe my next hint is, think about where are A and B, like in terms of where do they lie in between two integers, and maybe that can be helpful along the calculation. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the board. Hopefully you can try this problem a little bit with these hints, and then we'll look at a solution. Okay, so hopefully those hints were helpful. Now we're ready to look at a full solution. So I first wanna notice that we have some obvious solutions given by a equals zero or b equals zero. Because that just collapses both sides of this equation to zero, so we just have zero equals zero, so that's like always okay. So in other words, we can have a equal to zero and then b is any real number. We could have b equals zero and a is any real number, and then we're good to go. So what we'll do is we'll suppose that a and b are both not zero just because those solutions are already kind of taken care of. But that has another advantage of being able to turn this into an equation where everything with a floor is on one side and everything without a floor is on the other side because we can now divide if we don't have any zeros there. So in other words, now we have this equation a over b equals floor of a n over floor of b n, and this is true for all natural numbers n. Great. But now we want to use the fact that all natural numbers includes kind of the nicest one to work with, which is n equals 1. So let's just go ahead and write that, including n equals 1. So what that tells us is that we have a over b equals the floor of a over the floor of b. But now the floor of A is an inter integer and the floor of B is an integer, which means the floor of A divided by the floor of B is a rational number, which means we can write it in lowest terms. Let's say this fraction P over Q is equal to this rational number in lowest terms. So in other words, with the GCD of P and Q equal to one. Great. But now we can play with this equation a little bit and notice that that implies the following. We have the floor of A times Q equals P times the floor of B. Great. But now notice that tells us that P divides the floor of A times Q. But since the GCD of Q and P are one, that tells us that P in fact divides the floor of A. So in other words, once we put this floor of A over floor of B in lowest terms, that numerator is going to be a factor of the floor of A. Great, so the next thing that we wanna do is write the floor of A as K times P for some um, k, which is a natural number. So that's just uh, the definition of divisibility is you can write it as a multiple of p. Okay, fantastic. But now we can work back towards what a is instead of the floor of a. So notice that that tells us that a, well, in general, it's going to be equal to the floor of a plus some number r, where r 
is on the half open interval zero to one. It's kind of the definition of the floor function, right? But now we can write that as K times P. So we have A equals the floor of K times P plus R. Okay, fantastic. Now we're kind of running out of room, so I'll bring the important stuff up and then uh, we'll continue on. So on the last board, we took our quotient A over B and said that that was equal to the floor of A n over the floor of B n for all natural numbers n, in particular when n was equal to 1. And then we expressed that as a rational number in lowest terms given by P over Q, where the GCD of P and Q was equal to 1. So that's like equivalent to saying that it's in lowest terms. Then we argued that P must divide the floor of N times A, and that has to happen for all N, which are natural numbers, in particular when N equals one. Great, and then we use that to build the following equation. So we have A equals K times P plus R, where R is on the half open interval zero to one. Now we wanna look at two cases here. So case number one is if R equals zero. But now notice if R equals zero, then A just equals K times P. But those were both integers, which means that A is itself an integer. So now let's go ahead and plug this K times P into our equation up here. And that gives us K times P over B equals P over Q just looking at the like left hand and right hand side of this. But now notice we can cancel some things. So we can cancel P from both sides of the equation. And then we can do some cross multiplying and stuff and we'll end up with B equals K times Q, but that's also an integer. So in other words, we've got this family of solutions where A and B are both integers, but that also shouldn't be much of a surprise because when you take the floor of an integer, you just, you don't change it at all, so you're okay. So now we wanna look at the second case, which is when R is not equal to zero. So in other words, R is on the open interval zero to one. Good. So that means that there exists some natural number that where we can put R between one over that natural number and two over that natural number. So let's go ahead and write that out. So we have R is between one over N and two over N. So any number between zero and one can be placed between two rational numbers that way. Okay, great. So, so now the next thing that we want to do is notice that that implies that n times r must be between 1 and 2, and that's a half open interval. Now we want to look at um, the floor of n times a using this expression for a. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got the floor of n times a, so that's going to be the floor of n times kp plus r, again using that expression for a, but that's gonna be equal to the floor of n k p plus n r. But now we know that n times k times p is an integer, and then n times r is between one and two, so that tells us that this is equal to n times k times p plus one. Great. But now we also know that P divides the floor of N A. So that means that P also divides this because they're the same. So we have P divides N K P plus one, but P divides N times K times P. So that tells us that P divides one, which tells us that P equals plus minus one because the only divisors of one are plus and minus one. So we have P is plus or minus one. And then there wasn't anything special about P here. We could have done this entire argument off of B and Q, and we would have also seen that Q equals plus minus one, which tells us that A over B is plus or minus one. So let's go ahead and write that. So A over B is plus or minus one. And now I'll go ahead and bring that up and we'll finish it off.
So we ended the last board with A over B had to be equal to plus or minus one, but then by our defining equation here, that meant that the floor of A over the floor of B was also plus or minus one. So now let's work through both cases. So case number one will be A over B equals plus one. So in other words, A equals B. But notice if A equals B, then this equation over here clearly holds because we have A, the floor of A n, equals A, the floor of A n. So that's a tautology, it's always true. So here, this is okay. If you have A equals B, and that can be any real number, we've got a solution, so we're good to go. Now let's look at case number two, which will be A over B equals negative one. But now notice that that tells us that B equals negative A. So now let's go ahead and put that into this equation up here and see what we get. So that means we'll have the floor of A over the floor of negative A equals negative one. So in other words, we have negative the floor of A equals the floor of negative A. Good, and now we're gonna see why that is a problem. So let's go ahead and suppose that A equals M plus R, where again, R is on the half open interval zero to one. So I'll leave it to you guys to check if R is equal to zero, we're okay, but that's kind of the same thing as saying that A is an integer, and we saw that if A and B were both integers, then we had a solution here. So instead, let's suppose that R is not equal to zero, and let's see what that gives us. So if R is not equal to zero, we have negative the floor of A equals negative M, because that'll be the floor of this thing here. I should say here that M is some integer. Great, but then on the other hand, if we have the floor of negative A, that's gonna be the same thing as the floor of negative M minus R, but that's gonna be equal to negative M minus one. But notice that these are not equal to each other because that would be the same thing as saying zero is equal to one, which is clearly not true. So this leads to a contradiction, which means R had to be zero in the first place. So in summary, we have a couple of types of solutions. We have A could be equal to zero, or B could equal to be equal to zero. We could have A and B are free to be any integers they want, or we could have A equals B and they could be any real number. Okay, so that's a good place to stop.